Okay, so to get started, my name is Rachel. Um, I um, own Positively Perfect with my husband, Brad, um, in Lenox Village in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, this is our dog, Teeny, really and truly. This is Brad's little baby. He carries her around. Uh, she's at the shop all the time. Um, she's a good girl. She likes to be groomed. She likes to fall asleep while being groomed. Um, so you might see her pass out on us midway through. She's really, really good about that. Um, she's a very calm dog to groom. Um, Y'all have seen, probably seen some pictures, especially the one uh, for the advertisement of her with her dyed feet. Um, we've been keeping them dyed for a while. So I'm gonna show y'all how to, I do that ombre effect on her. Um, to start out, Teenie's already had a full bath um, and br been brushed out. Um, her nails have been done. Her ears have been uh, plucked and cleaned. Um, her paw pad, sanitary. I did pre-shave her back. Um, and now I'm just making sure I don't have any knots before I apply the dye. Um, just cause you want, you really want a clean dog when you're working with dye because it does not adhere very well when there's grease or any dirt buildup, um, what have you on the dog. Um, and you won't get the desired result that you want. You won't get the vibrant, pretty color that is advertised um, on the website. And that's a lot of, a lot of the time that's what a lot of people make the mistake is they don't pre-wash. And it says so on the directions of the bottles to uh, pre-wash the dog first. And then I comb the dye through the hair when I'm doing it. So I don't want to make sure I'm not going to snag anything and my comb jump up and put dye where it doesn't need to go. I don't know if I mentioned this, but Teeny is a Shih Tzu, a full-blooded Shih Tzu that does not grow hair. Her ears have never been cut and she's four years old. Um, so it takes her quite a while to grow in a growing coat. I'm gonna start by mixing the colors that I wanna use. I'll show you all the tools that I use um, when dyeing. Put these bowls. Can you come here and lay down? Down. Lay down. Can you down? No? So since I'm right, I normally do on her, she normally gets a deep navy blue. I used a blue black the last time um, and it kind of faded to purple because I mixed in some blue with it. But you can see it's grown out quite a bit. I don't remember the last time we dyed her. It's been a pretty long while. It lasts a good bit on her coat. Um, but since I'm low on her navy blue, I'm gonna do a deep purple at the bottom um, and doing some of the navy on the top and then working to that light blue to make the feet an ombre look. So to make my desired look, um, for like the full colors, if I like, um, like I really like this navy blue. It's a very deep, vibrant navy blue, and um, it actually really um, absorbs into her coat well. Um, if it was up to me, she'd be green, but her daddy does not appreciate those colors. He's already got a girly enough dog. He wants to keep it very masculine as possible with a ponytail. So I'm gonna add my navy into one of these bowls. So I have a bowl for each color and then I have a uh, brush for each color. And I know that Opal's does sell their own bowls and brushes um, on their website. So it's very convenient whenever you order the dye that you can just order those as well. Um, and then I'm gonna add my light color. That I want to use 
And to create the deep purple, because with this crazy quarantine and everything going on, we actually haven't ordered color in a long no. time. Sorry. Our assistant Skylar's coming in to help us and the dogs are telling us all about it. But I'm gonna, I don't have any of the purple with me. Um, I actually used it all on my last side dog. So I'm gonna make my own purple. I know, that's your friend, I know. And to do that, I'm gonna put her down, sorry, Jean, until she, she can say hi to Skylar. But, so I added a little bit of the blue black into this. Um, I have the, the, the permanent black with, that comes in a box that you have to mix. Um, that one, it, it's amazing. It's deep black, has to grow out, it doesn't fade. It's a very nice black color, but this one's more definitely what it says, blue, blue, black. It really does fade to purple. Um, so that's why I'm going to use it as my base. Um, and Skylar, if you see any questions on there, just call them out. Um, once the dye is sitting on her and processing, we'll do a questions and answers. Um, so if you have any questions in the moment that aren't big questions, um, you can definitely, um, Ask, uh, I'll answer them then, but if you're asked uh, what I'm doing, if you have something to ask about what I'm doing at the moment, feel free. Um, I added some of the pink. Uh, this is that um, the charm pink. Um, I try not to mix. I'm, I'm doing the permanent, the, sim, uh, the permanent. I have the semi-permanent. Um, that is what I'm going to do is the Hawaiian blue. Um, I really, really enjoy this color for her. So, um, but the other colors I'm going to be using is, is the permanent collection that they have. And um, I'm mixing a little bit of the charm pink into that blue black just to see um, where I'm at and how deep of the color is. Can you get me a, um, a couple of those um, white tally thingies? T shirt tally thingies. And what I'll do is I'll test the color out. Um, normally I would on a paper towel, but um, our glorious state does not have any paper towels for sale anywhere. So um, I'm gonna use a, um, we have these t-shirt um, towels that we use a lot in the salon to, um, to clean. Um, and then we wash, take them home and wash them and it'll, it'll show up the pigment on there. Purple can sometimes be a tricky color with lighting. Sometimes it can almost look pink. Um, when you're doing it so you got to try to um, uh, fiddle with it until you get the color that you like Someone asked if you could show the amount um, right now I only put so I only put about a, a smidge so like this is all that's in there if you could see it's just a little bit so I only put a tiny bit of each color so far. I try, um, I try when I'm mixing a color to only put a little bit at a time until I get the desired color because I don't want a big thing of color that I'm not going to use, so I'm not wasting it. Um, this is the the navy. The navy. This is all I have left of it. Um, this will go pretty a pretty long way. Um, and then the um, Hawaiian blue. So. I'm gonna see what swatch this out and it's still that blue black color um, so I'm gonna add a little bit more of um, the blues to it um, to brighten it up um, and then I'm gonna add a little bit more pink as well that blue is a lot lighter than the blue black so it should um, add a kind of brighten up that that deep black blue color and because it is showing up so blue I'm gonna add a little bit of red for me um, when mixing a color if you're doing it for a client I would suggest writing down what you do because you don't want to end up making a color that you can't reproduce for me i'm really good at eyeballing it um 
so I, I can keep up pretty much by doing that with my color or for my colors. So I'm just adding a little bit more pink. And add a little bit more pink as again. having the same luck that I did last night mixing this color. Just made a really pretty purple with it. There we go, it's starting to get more purple. I'm actually, um, you can, um, and you order, I ordered the kit and it comes with dilution cream um, and this can make the color lighter. Um, so I'm gonna add a little bit of that in there to see if I can lighten this up to make it that more purple. So it's starting to turn a, a lot more plum. And that's kind of like the look that I'm going for with this is that plum purple. And I'll show you on the back of this what that color ended up looking like. So on Teeny, because I've been doing this a while, I know that it won't be exactly this color but it'll be pretty plum um, after it's rinsed out. So with dyeing also, keep in mind you're gonna go home looking like the dye. I still wear gloves, but you're gonna get it on you some way, somehow. It'll wash off in a day or so. Um, it's not a big deal. Um, but they're dogs, they're gonna move around, so you just gotta be patient with them. Um, I try not to encourage dye on dogs that I know that won't handle it very well. Um, those are the dogs that are real nervous for grooming. Um, they're really nervous for, you know, just any, any of those, they, they have key triggers. Um, and I try not to do it on brand new clients um, because I've never met the dog. I don't want it to go ahead and, you know, jump into doing something with a dog that I don't know the personality of, um, especially with creative grooming and doing the coloring. So I'm gonna move all my bowls to the end of the table and pull Teeny up here because I've got to band up her hair. Um, this process, like I said, the bowls and the brushes, um, I always keep a, a comb that I like to use. This comb is old but it's the, my favorite comb to use to brush the dye through because I want to get it deep down to the root. Um, and then I have a backup comb in case, just in case I need it. Um, you can use the, um, this is the, um, the isolation cream. You can use this to put it on places that you don't want the dye. Um, I'm not gonna do that today. I do that with dogs that um, we're gonna do the ears on and they tend to shake when you do ears um, and sometimes they'll take shake the foil off and stuff so you'll want to put it around so they don't have this gigantic halo uh, from the dye. Can I get my baby? Hi Teeny, you've already gotten your hair bow out. Um, I'm gonna band her hair up just so that her it doesn't get in the way because she likes to investigate everything that's going on sometimes. Um, Especially with her daddy here. She's not going to act like she normally does. For me, he's not normally allowed in the room when, we, when I groom her because typical um, reason you don't want your clients with you when you're grooming. They're trying to get to their, their owner. Um, since Teeny likes to fall asleep, I don't put the grooming loop around the neck. Um, a lot of um, small dogs actually don't put the grooming loop around the neck because especially like your Yorkies and your small dogs are prone to having um, collapsed tracheas. Um, so sit, this will support her enough if she does start to sag uh, while, she, while I'm doing her because she likes to fall asleep. Um, and I'll come over on that side. I do like the Sally's foil. Um, a lot of the times I freehand a lot of things, but um, they're the, the foil that you would buy uh, from Sally's that's already pre-cut and it comes in a little thing. So it's like a tissue box. So once you pull one out, the other one's ready and available. Um, I'm going to come around on that side and show you how I band her up.
that a little bit better? I'm gonna move. So all this top hair, I don't want in the dye. So Tini, Tini has a lot of hair going on here, but it's also very layered. So I normally use the like, the little rubber bands that you would get from the dollar store. Uh, they say they no snag. They're the ones I have the, I don't, I would never use like the, uh, the silicone bands that you, some people use to make grooming bows out of. Uh, but these ones pretty much break um, when you try to get them out and that's the best thing for it. Did you get that message from Brian? Um, so I work my way up and band the hair um, kind of in layers and I just make sure there's no skin in it and um, band it so I don't get the dye in it. band this back here up on the back part of the leg. And I got out you also whenever you're uh, doing dye, if you've not complete if you're not finished with the groom or you're not um, if you're going to groom the dog afterwards, you want to keep in mind on what you're going to cut off. So, because I want to layer an ombre effect, I don't want to just do the teeny tiny tips of her feet, knowing that I'm going to round all this up, and you'll not, you won't see that dark first layer of color. So, for her first color layer, I normally go. Top, like where the top where the uh, the foot does its first bend right here so her knuckles are here so I'm pushing the foot back kind of like what you would do with a poodle foot um, so that top for portion I don't know if you can see it but so it's about that far in um, that will be her that's where her first layer will start And sometimes the bands will get put on top of the other bands so that it doesn't sag down. It just depends on how long the dog's hair is. Um, I know, it normally doesn't take this long. Huh? that's about where I'm going to start her first, that first purple layer on her. Um, and it doesn't, I mean, I try to get the part as good as I can, um, but since it's going to be layered, you're not going to see it because you're not dying on top of the fur and down. Um, it's layered. So her, that, that next layer will fall over. And then I'll just do the 
rest of her back foot same way same top of the foot is where I want to start um, Teeny's quite used to this process about the same amount um, because it's the back foot it, it she's got a lot more hair on it for some reason right now that I'm gonna need to bevel out later um, so that's gonna be her first layer on that back foot and I'll move it forward so you can see it so that's her first little gremlin foot on the back. And I'm gonna come around and do the other side real quick so we can get to applying the dye. Hey Skylar, will you do me a favor? Will you come up here and swipe that text message up? Cause it's hard to see. Thank you. And this is why I say this process isn't for every dog, because some dogs can't handle sitting here for this long. For me, um, because I'm explaining, it's taking me a little bit, it takes me a little bit longer while I'm talking to do this, but it generally takes me about a couple minutes to get all these bands in, because I do it really fast. Um, Almost there, girlfriend. Are you tired? You've had such a long day. You might want to sit on spot.
Okay, so all the first layer is done. Um, now that that first layer is done, I'm going to actually dye because I'm going to add the tip of her tail into this. Um, so I'm going to make that ombre effect on the very ends of her tail. Um, I'm doing that first because I know uh, with her, because I've been doing, I've done her so many times, that she, um, her tail doesn't absorb color like her legs do. Um, so I want it to sit on longer than the rest of it. So I'll start with that first. I know, I know you hate standing. I'm gonna put that there for support. So kind of with her uh, legs, I'm gonna do the same thing with her tail. Um, I want it to be an ombre effect from the, the tip and gradually go down. So I'm gonna band up the first part in just one simple band. Um, so it's not there. Make sure that I've got just her little tip hairs. Brush through them real quick. I'm gonna pull the dye that I'm working with towards me and get a couple pieces of foil. Normally I only wear one glove, but today I'm gonna do two because they're doing so much. So I'll push all this hair up with my hand that I'm trying not to get dye on. I'll come towards y'all. I'm using the box to try to discourage her from sitting down. Um, normally I don't mind her sitting down, but this way she's not getting dye everywhere. But I'm pushing all of this hair up, and so I only have this tip hanging out. And from the root, I'm gonna put it all around that top part. Okay, well I guess you're gonna work your way around the box, huh? And then all around the bottom part, working it in there. Um, because it's the tail, um, it's easier for me to take it and um, pull it apart. You can't really see, hold on. Can you angle it down so that it can be seen? Um, but I'm taking my, my fingers and I'm spreading it apart. And this gives me a good idea of what she's getting on die-wise. There is, um, underneath this towel is an empty navy, like it's almost empty navy blue bottle. Um, it's a little muddy looking, so I'm gonna add an, another, um, some color on top. It's empty, this one is empty. So I'm gonna add some navy into it to see if it'll make it a, a little bit more pleasing color that I like. Um, you're gonna have to like, cause it's like done. Sorry, this color is on its last leg of life. We use it so often. So, other scissors are over here. They're over here somewhere. Um, I think I put them on the table. So I'm going to use what's left in here and add it to my purple and drop it on the floor.
right. And then for that first layer on the tail, I don't want to fold it on the where her the bone of her tail, um, but I'm gonna wrap the hair in foil to the bone. If that makes sense. And I'm gonna unband the rest of it. My next layer to be here. take this navy blue color and a different brush and I'm going to add it to this layer. I don't know why it stays. With the navy, it's a little tricky because you want to get it really saturated on the dog. Um, like every strand. With the navy, I'm gonna comb through it a couple times, make sure it's all over so it doesn't, it comes out even. like sparse looking spots or anything of that nature because you don't want it to look um, like you missed a couple spots um, and that's a big mistake a lot of people use with the darker colors um, and this will develop and get a little bit darker as well um, and I'm going to use a little bit since I am um, using a lighter color to kind of fade this in I'm using that lighter color to kind of blend it in the same thing with the foil. Foil it up. And because it is going to be on the bone of her tail, I make sure it's not too tight because I don't want to, you know, mess up any circulation or anything like that. next layer
my light color. Add that. Um, I'm wiping it off on a towel, but as soon as I wipe it off, it, it won't transfer. Same with this color, um, I'm going to brush it through. And where I've got it, um, where I don't want it, I'm going to take some of that um, isolation cream. Um, it'll lighten it where it looks blended. Add that to the top so it doesn't look so blunt there. And to complete this um, tail ombre, a little bit to the ends. And then I'm gonna add the isolation cream into it. Kind of like you, you could use conditioner to do this um, to make it where it's not so a, so much of a harsh line. to the roots all over. Just about getting it very saturated all the way down and on each strand. some more color. See that. Real good. And this time, I'm not going to 
band to hold foot. I'm just gonna put some on top of the that first level because she will kick the the, uh, the foil off most of the time. Same with the next foot. And when I'm combing, I'm looking for any any places that don't have the dye. Because you, a lot of people overlook that if you just put it on top and think that you've got it all the way down to the skin. Most of the time you don't, so you want to comb it through just to make sure that it's all the way down. Sleep on me, you sleepy. You just have a hard life laying around all the time, sleeping all the time. It's just terrible. Just repeating the same exact process on all the feet, all four feet. and he thought he, you were going with him home. So, Daddy. Put down. Put down. You got this, good girl. And I try to keep their foot, like, be careful with some, some smaller breeds with their uh, knees and um, legs because they do get rotating patellas and torn ACLs pretty easy. Um, I know Tini doesn't have that problem, but I'm just trying to keep it where I'm not turning her foot, her back feet, in a weird angle. I don't want to make it uncomfortable, so I just have it lifted slightly. I know, you're trying to sit in my hand. I know.
that first layer done, I'm going to clean up all the purpley splotches that I've left everywhere. Clean myself up. Excuse you? Who you, who you talk to? Yeah, there's nobody. Oh, there's a kid riding a bike. That might be dangerous. All right, so for this, the next layer, I'll unband. And I'm not using the comb that I used on the purple on this because I don't want to um, contaminate that next layer with that comb. So that's why you want to have a couple backup combs. this layer to be a small layer so I'm trying to only bring down a little bit of hair um, I'll comb it out make sure that it looks okay It's not a lot of hair, but it's still. It's still gonna look cute for that next layer. Do you want to unband the top layer on the other side? So it'll go quicker. You know, the, um, just the little bit. bands because they break easy it makes it easier to pull them down um, Tini's hair is pretty fine um, some dogs um, with a thicker coat or um, a coarser coat I could use clips on instead of the bands uh, but for her the, the clips just slide out Once I get them all pretty even, same amount of hair, 
on the next layer. I repeat the same process that I just did on um, the purple, combing it through. Um, wipe off the comb that I was using that for. Because I'm running out of the navy, I'm going to add a little bit of this the slider blue into it. I am using permanent. I, um, the, the light blue is a semi-permanent, I have to correct that, um, but I feel like it lasts just as long as the permanent, or in my experience it does. Yeah, I know. Fine. Oh, they're gonna get you. Ducky. Stop encouraging it. Barbara says she put her permanent over semi permanent, but it didn't last at all. What did she do wrong? Did she wash her dog first? And then also, how many washes should you expect to get this out then? I warn my clients and let them know that it's going to grow out. 
uh, because even if it does fade a little bit, it's still going to be there. Um, this will stay vibrant on Teeny for at least, I would say, two months before it starts really fading on her. And a lot of the fading is her coat growing in. Yeah, because uh, that one layer is almost dry, like on the top part of it, so it'll, it also blend it. yeah, and it'll make it more of that ombre look without touching a little bit. You are getting fed up, I get it. Actually in the shop uh, since we've been closed for the past two weeks um, she hasn't had her normal um, baths but we do she normally gets bathed once a week um, because she is my dirty gremlin and has no problems getting gross I have clients that I um, I do the ears on and the tails um, and I have a couple of them one that comes in I think every four weeks and um, she's had pink in her ears for about six months it's faded quite a bit and grown out quite a bit but it's still there the color shampoos last very long it depends on the dog and the coat and how long you let it process. For Teeny, um, when I do the color shampoo on her, um, the pink doesn't last very long on her. I want to say it lasts about a week or two, uh, just depending on what she's gotten into. Um, on, I want to say the blue lasts maybe a week or so longer um, and it's a really faded blue whenever it lasts that long. Um, it really just depends on coat and their texture and how well they absorb it and how long you leave it on. Um, I want to say we did Buffy pink. Buffy was pink for probably two weeks. Does that sound about right? With the color shampoo and we left that on her for 35 minutes. I know. We're almost there. Did she respond about um, if she washed the dog first or not? Uh, she said she washed it three or four washes after the semi-permanent. It was washed before applying as well, but... Uh, did you use a conditioner before you... Um, when you pre-washed, did you use a conditioner before you um, put the dye on?
all my trash out of the way and wipe off my hands so I can do the next layer, pull her bands down. did she process it for? And was it very vibrant whenever she uh, rinsed it? We use the Nature Specialties, just the regular, uh, right? You know the. It's the yeah, and it it doesn't deter. Um, did you? I mean, like I would wash. I make sure to wash um, in cold water or cool water, not freezing cold, but cool water instead of warm. Um, and let it. I normally let it process for 25 minutes. Sometimes it goes a little longer than that. Um, with the processing, depending on um, everything, but I always sit with my dog. Yes, they need. I especially uh, not only will it absorb into the hair better if they're dry, um, you would get better control of where you're putting the dye. Um, and you don't necessarily, I mean, if you're going to, um, if you're doing like the ears and the tail, you can do a good washing on the ears and tail and then um, dry those parts, dye those parts, let it process, and then do the body washing in the tub um, after when you're rinsing the dye. Um, so it's not a longer process of having to wash the dog completely twice. Um, but I normally just wash the whole dog. Make sure it's as even as possible. Even though it's going to be layered down, I still want it to be even. I will do a completion photo afterwards. Um, I will finish up her groom, which won't take me very long after she's rinsed, um, and put on her her accessories and to her top knot. And we'll post a picture.
she's always falling asleep. She was snoring when I did the mermaid design. the navy stay there girl i know you're falling asleep on me um i'm gonna have to lighten it up a little bit with the um the lightening cream or that lightening cream i'm sorry um dilution cream so i ask are you gonna stay by for you to, to watch you finish her um yes so i'm just adding a little bit to make this color just a tiny bit lighter um just in case that so there's an actual difference between the two colors. Making googly eyes at daddy. Because I'm doing three colors and not the normal two, it's going a little higher than I normally do. Which I like. Um, if I wanted to ombre the whole leg, um, you can always let this process longer and then go over with like the lighter shade over the rest of the top of the hair um, and only process it um, for half the time of the, the other light shade. Um, so it's more of a diluted blue. Um, but I don't like doing her whole leg. Um, if I do that, I normally do the color shampoo blue. If I'm gonna do uh, the whole leg in an ombre. Isolation cream stuff to the top. It'll help that fade a little bit more whenever the other hair falls over. I try to make it when I put the foil on that she can lay her foot flat perfectly fine. Pulling a little bit more hair down. So it matches the other foot. And I painted myself. Please don't eat those. Thank 
some What shampoo? Uh, I've used the coloring shampoo um, several times. We actually have a gigantic bottle of the pink, um, and I've used up all of the green that we had, and I've used up all the blue and almost all the purple. Um, I really like the color shampoo. Also use they um the last time I ordered I got a sample of their actual shampoo and I really like that um it's good especially uh for a pre-wash on a dog uh before the dye because it I think it's a I believe it's a degreaser I think uh, Andrea can correct me on that if I'm wrong when you do the next layer are you coming through layer that you removed full off of um, trying to avoid that. So I avoided it at first, but now that it's been drying so long, um I'm I'm it's not really gonna mix the colors. Um it's gonna blend them a little bit. So um at first I only pull out that color, that one layer that I'm working on, and then I comb through the whole thing. Make sure this other back way is as even to this one. Almost. So you see, I'm putting that part like applying it first with that foil that's there, kind of as the barrier. Um, I'm using the, the top uh, one that I'm working on right now is the Hawaiian blue that I add a little bit of the um, the semi-permanent because that Hawaiian blue is a semi-permanent the other two are permanent dyes um, this is the uh, the dilution cream it makes it a little bit lighter um, and then I use navy blue and permanent and I mixed um, a couple different things for the um, purple but I always experiment and mix colors because um, it's always fun to mix it up and a lot of people don't realize that you they were made to mix as long as you're I, I would be careful about mixing the um, permanent and semi-permanent um, just cleaning up my, my stuff this has got a process for about 25 minutes um, her tail, um, 
obviously will be processed a lot longer and so is that first layer but the, those are the deep colors so they need to stay on longer anyways but I always try to clean up my mess after I'm done Brad if you want to come and take these bowls and all of this foil away or bring a trash can over here and I'll start throwing things away the same amount as the permanent dye um, and on teeny it's about uh, it really depends on the coat but on teeny it, it's lasted up to two to three months um, it's actually lasted longer a lot of it just a lot of the time grows out for me um, I always that's the first thing I warn a client when they they approach wanting to get dyed I was like I always tell them that it's I would expect it to grow out just some coats it will fade on, but generally you're dyeing the Maltese's, Bichon's, Shih Tzu's, um, and they tend to hold dye a lot longer than some of the um, like soft, like the Wiggins and the coarser coated dogs. So I'm going to have him, I'm going to put all my things away, and I'm going to unband her hair. Um, and I might go wash my hands real quick. Um, thinking, while I wash my hands, if I want to think of questions, while this is processing, um, I'm going to have, Skylar, if you can watch the time for me for about 20 minutes, 25, 20, 25 minutes. Sure. Um, someone asked, what about a standard poodle coat? I want it, I always would just let them know that it's gonna, it's more than likely gonna have to grow out. Um, and it might fade, um, sometimes it'll fade to like a prettier and lighter color. Um, but all the dogs that I do um, in dye, they normally have dye for the next few times they come in until that hair's grown off out. Um, some of the palms, tails that I do, depending on how, how much they blow coat, um, depends on how long it lasts because they, they'll shed it out. Um, on a shedding breed, they'll shed out um, the color quicker than a, um, a Shih Tzu or one of your just regular hair breeds. So I'm trying to remove all the bands that I have in here before the bath so that way it doesn't have any issues. Um, and then after, when I remove the bands and stuff, um, I try to like look and make sure that, that there's no like color problems that I'm not gonna cut out on her. Like she has a little bit on her, um, on her chest, and a tiny bit right here. And Brad, if you, cause not your hands aren't blue, will you take some of this and rub it in right there? Um, if you, before it can completely process, if you put conditioner or the isolation cream on it, it'll lighten it up a lot. Um, the lighter the color, the quicker it fades. Uh, when you're doing a pre-wash, um, don't do conditioner on your dog. Um, because it will, it'll keep it from the coat absorbing the dye. And you don't want that, I mean, you don't want it to look splotchy, which that can happen if you do conditioner for, um, when you do the pre-wash. Um, Teeny, um, I just rushed in regular shampoo, um, and I gave her a facial trying to lighten up. Um, she normally doesn't have eye staining for some reason. She got, um, a stomach bug and ended up with some staining, so hopefully that'll grow back out. But... So while it's processing, I normally sit with the dog. Um, if I can foil the legs where they can lay down without getting it on there, unfortunately I can't with Teeny. Um, I'll let them lay on the table. Most of the time, uh, if I'm doing ears. Someone wants to know, uh, does the dye work well on short-coated dogs? Yes. Um, you need to make sure that you're really working it into the coat with short-coated dogs. 
um, and always keep in mind that it's going to shed out so it's gonna look kind of weird until it's completely gone once it starts that shed out process it takes a while um, we did uh, Sadie when she was our American Bulldog and I how long was she pink for But she shed out a lot. She did, but she, but she was the uh, the deepest pink color. So she had that really dark pink color, and it had it like slowly went to bubble gum, and then until it finally faded out. But it, um, so you always gotta keep that in mind when you're working with dye, like the the coat, and if it's gonna shed, um, how quick the coat grows out, and how soft the coat is. Be in condition after you rinse out the dye. So that was the thing. Whenever we're rinsing. I can get a good idea when she's rinsed what the color is going to look like when I dry it. So if it is not the color that I desire, um, if I want to like add some more dye to it or um, I'm thinking about adding dye into another place to make the overall outcome look better, um, I don't condition because I don't want to mess it up. Um, so what I will do is I... Um, if I don't like it, I'll dry her where those parts that I'm going to put dye on, put the dye on, process it, and then take her, and then I'll just rinse it and then condition. Um, I won't do a shampoo um, if I'm for a third time. Um, excuse me, ma'am. What are you doing? You're trying to lay down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's not a possibility right now. Um... I'm gonna wash my hands really quick, so if y'all wanna get some questions or anything uh, that you can think of while I do that, I'll be right back. So I make sure when I get dye all over my hands that I thoroughly wash my hands, especially if I have another light colored dog coming in. And I do that until the water's clear until I, and especially where I feel like it's, there's no like actual remnants of the dye besides it being saturated in my skin and has processed into my skin. Um, this will last about a day on my hands, but you see how much of it came off with me washing. So the reason I say that is because if you go to do a light color dog, even though I'm touching on teeny with my hands the way they are dry, um, if I would get them wet, it would transfer the dye that was on my hands to the white fur or the light fur. Um, so I always make sure that my hands are thoroughly washed before um, I mess with them. Um, yeah, we can do that. Uh, let me, if you want to take her, I will, um, I, um, I'm going to clean up the table so I can get all the dye off of it and work on Hi, Jamie Lee. Did it turn out good? Yes. If you want to, Skylar, if you can take this back over there. Um, I'm going to brush her out real quick and, um, I'm going to put her, I'm not going to put her hair in a top knot just yet until her grooming is completed. Um. But I'm going to put it in just a large ponytail. So the purple ended up being more of a, a deeper plum. Um, her tail does not absorb color very well. So um, in the future, I might go over that uh, when I order some purple um, to make it more vibrant. Because it's not as, I mean, it stayed on longer, but it's not as deep as her feet are. Um, it if, like, Opal's does make a lightening cream that you can lighten the color, uh, the, the hair. Um, Andrea, it should be still in there and she can tell you about their lightening cream. Uh, but what you would do is you would lighten the coat with the cream and, um, and then apply the dye on top. Um, I don't, I plan on doing that with Ducky when she's older. And trying that with her back or her, her her butt when it fully grows in because she saw some puppy coat um, and doing some colors on her um, with her deep colored coat but I would use the light uh, the lightning cream What's best for hairless, hairless dogs so I don't have any hairless dogs that we do and I've never done any creative on them I would speak with somebody that does um, know a lot about the skin uh, maybe a groomer that does have a hairless breed um, I have two hairless cats uh, I have two Sphinx and um, they have enough 
it's like the way they describe it is like a warm peach so they do have hair but they appear hairless so on my hairless cat rue he's black he would um i could do the chalk on him because there's that barrier still that uh separates him it from being like all the way to the skin um but i'm i don't want to tell you something that i don't know 100 percent the answer on because i don't want a dog's skin to get irritated But like on a powder powder puff, it would it would be similar to teeny. It would absorb dye very easily. You should call fancy. And I still have to cut some of the hair on the feet to make it more visible. But you see how it's kind of a gradient from the light color to the dark color. And the top layer overlays it so it looks more like a peekaboo than a like straight across blunt looking uh, dye. If you were going to do something like that on like a shorter coated dog, um, I would take a conditioner and blend the conditioner into that top, like this, this top color. I would blend it so it's a gradient up instead of doing just this harsh line. Because Teeny is at the shop so much, we have a lot of dogs in this hair in this exact hairstyle. So I end up doing a lot of if I do feet, they always end up looking like hers, where it's just a peekaboo color. When she walks, it um, kind of flows. Hey girl. when I'm doing her and like cleaning or trimming her face or uh, doing her haircut to keep her hair all the way I put it in a ponytail like a rubber band that won't break um, and I always tell people when they see me do this that it's not a permanent thing that I do because she has very little ears I make sure none of that that ear skin is in her ponytail um, because you don't want to cut off any of the circulation. This just keeps it up and out of the way for me. Um, Teeny has that Asian fusion groom, so she's had, her ear starts here. She still has a little bit of hair underneath her, um, her ear. Up. And because I'm growing her body, I'm going to put her, uh, the loop around, but it's very loose. Um, I don't want her to choke herself. Hey, can I have that? My clippers are being loud and I will take them apart and fix it. Um, after I'm done here, um, but just so I'm not taking too much time, um, I'm not, I'll fix it later. They're still working. They're just loud. So I'm just going to go back over her paw pads. I like cleaner paw pads than some other people. Hi. Okay. So for her, um, I will usually take my 40 blade that I was using and I will pull everything forward to make the bevel at the bottom level. 
Skylar, do you see anything on there? And I'll go back over it with scissors, but I just want to get a general shape. That almost walking on air kind of look to it. Excuse me, excuse me. You're only acting out because your daddy's here. I know, you can even lie and look all you want. So I'm still going to scissor all of that. Um, that just gives me a, um, a map. Can you give me my clipper or my, um, the rest of my stuff over there? Okay. Um, and I did that with a 40 blade. I do her paw pads in the bevel with a 40. Um, I'm going to go over her sanitary with a 10. Just get anything that I missed. And when I'm doing a sanitary on this type of trim, I go um, all the way to the hawk on the inside. Gives that really clean appearance and almost makes it look like chaff. She's so worried about what you're doing. Now with her, um, this is something I learned um, at a grooming, um, a grooming class I did. It was like an eight hour long class. I um, mean, they were doing standard poodles, um, but they like cinched in the waist and it made the dog look a lot thinner um, because Shih Tzus can be a kind of a, chunkers she's got a good um a good waist but um she could definitely stand to um to tone down a little bit and get some more muscle um but to make her appear um that way i'm gonna take my 10 blade and go up a little bit on the sides She gets a seven on her back, um, and then I do a four in the reverse to, to neaten it up uh, most of the time. Um, so 
that'll blend out really nice, but it still gives her the appearance of having a, a good waist. Blades for me, Fred. The blades. Those ones on the counter. I need. I need the four. I don't have a four here, but um, the rest of my sevens and stuff over there. Um. So I went over this with the seven earlier, but I'm gonna try to even it out with a, a four in reverse. Um, I'm constantly checking them. Um, I The blade kind of sounds different whenever it starts getting warmer. Um, but with my 10 blade, I just have a general idea of how long I could go. And then I start checking it. Um, I don't check it on my hands because of the calluses and stuff. I normally do it on the inside of my arm. Because if it's too warm for the inside of my arm, it's going to be too warm for them. Ooh, does that tickle? And when I'm doing the reverse, I'm not going into this because I'll blend that more with uh, the seven blade. She has a, dro a very, very soft drop coat. Um, so sometimes when I run like the seven over it, it's like the clippers can't get certain spots. Um, I don't do this for every dog. Uh, just the dogs that I want to make sure that I'm getting the, um, the same length all over um, that have where the, like, the skin or the hair is so soft that it doesn't get, it gets overlooked, I guess. Um, I'm also making sure to pull the skin tight as I go. And don't let her fool you, she's not overly exhausted from any of the grooming. She is a sleepy dog.
I usually go in reverse. Um, so in her armpit, if you are uncomfortable using um, a blade in the armpit, your best bet is to use a 10. I'm very gentle with it. Like. I've never had it with opals. <laughs> never had a client tell me that they started licking their feet more um, or any of that. And Teeny's never had an issue. And she, you know, Shih Tzu's are more prone to skin issues. show you um because of her groom I kind of take all of this out for more cleanliness so I take this and lightly from here lightly go down a 10 and go around her eyes. Um, I do shave her lips before the bath with a 40 blade. Um, I like the way it looks. Uh, normally I also have the whiskers clipped in the sh um, in the tub. We didn't do that today. 
but I will do it her uh, when I clean her up the next time. Um, if you don't have any questions, I'm just going to go through finishing her up real quick so that she can be completed. After this, um, this leg and one of the front ones, I will uh, put her top knot on and then um, I'll take a picture of the completed look so that the live doesn't go on so much longer. Because I can't see a whole lot of that coloring, I will pull up the hair and thin out some of that top coat. Still giving that beveled look, but still exposing some of that color.
Andrea, if you could tell me if there's anything else that you wanted me to go over um, before I put her top knot up and complete her. Um, that way we're covering all our bases. She was fine. Um, Brad, if you want to go over, someone asked about how we charge for pricing. If you want to talk to them while I finish this up real quick um, about that, um, like because I know we do it by hour, but you're better at the, the numbers than I am because we charge with how much the die costs and whatnot too. Yeah, because it's charging at the rate of 60 per hour in 15 minute increments, so over 15, 30, 45, or one hour. And so basically, if it's going to be a thing that's going to be shampoo or small, tiny things like the tips of the tail, then it would be a base price of $15. Um, and then from there, it will go just depending on the time it takes. Um, and then it's going to also, I mean, you got to, in your area, base your prices off of kind of like what you charge for grooming, um, as well as how much you pay for the product and how much product you're going to use. Brad did all those numbers and had come up with a price for our, our shop. Because it does need to be somewhere where you're gonna lose money. Yeah, you don't, <clears throat> and with all the work that goes into dyeing, you wanna be compensated for um, your work that, and also where it makes you wanna be more creative instead of overwhelmed. But we are based in Nashville, and we've got a lot of people that like their little breeds and their little breeds to be very colorful. Are you falling asleep? So I'm going to do the other two legs off camera whenever, uh, but I'll show you what they look like um, in a second. Um, and then I'll take a final product picture, but those are her, those are her two. Welcome. All right. 
But her face, I'm gonna put her top knot up. Face will take me only a few minutes. Um, I like to use the the uh, half moon comb for a face like this. It really helps a lot. Save and share the video after you're done. Okay. Has nothing to do with you, ma'am. Nope, has nothing to do with you. It's not your daddy. Well, she's worried that you're cheating on her with the cat. her more for a picture. That's kind of the general idea. T likes to lay down while we do top knots. Right, will you get me, will you roll up one of those towels for me real quick while I pull my stuff to get? When you're doing pictures, they do sell these. Um, um, I made my own that matches teeny uh, for right now, but for you know, just just for a cute picture to add to it. Um, Lay your head on your pillow. Good girl. Well, well this is before she forgets. Thank you so much. It has been informative and a delight to watch. Thank y'all. If y'all have any questions or um, interested in any videos, um, I'm, I'm going to post my Instagram um, and our Facebook um, on the video when we share it into the group, um, so you can look at some of our our work we've done. If you would like a video on any of that, definitely contact me or. You can also add me as a friend on Facebook. Teeny. Y'all aren't defending anything. That dog is three times your size. How dare I? How dare I? You have a unicorn horn. Hold on.
some weird dogs. I normally do her in pigtails. Uh, her hair does better in pigtails. She has a lot of breakage all the time because she's a messy girl. Totally put it in upside down. Sorry, teeny. He's so cute. He's so cute. All right, so I'm going to finish all the rest of her up off camera and take a good picture. And we'll be posting um, her finished results online. Um, but if y'all definitely contact us if you want any more videos um, or any extra information. Again, my name is Rachel um, in Nashville, Positively Perfect Salon. And this is Miss Dini. Thank you. Y'all have a good day.